they don't wish to report on just how bad that is. Because if they do that, people will understand, wait a minute, when you're telling me to move back to a certain area, you're doing that knowing that the radioactivity half-life of this plutonium is 240-some thousand years. The side story being after I got the Trump passes, I figured I was spied on anyway and I wasn't worried about Google. The caller messed that up. Now you got both stories. Plutonium has the longest half-life of virtually anything. Uranium's almost as bad. Hey Google, what is the half-life of radioactive uranium? Here's what I understood from the website lifescience.com. Uranium-238 has a half-life of an incredible 4.5 billion years. Do you want a little more context? No. 4.5 five billion years. Is that in my... Uranium 238. On the website hey illustratedmathematics.org Hey they Google, say, stop. Uranium... We got technology on the show and cle clearly it doesn't know when to be quiet. Tiny fragments of plutonium may have been carried more than 200 kilometers by cesium particles released following the meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan in 2011. So says an international group of scientists that has made detailed studies of soil light on conditions inside the sealed off reactors and should aid in the plant's decommissioning. Notice how they just roll that out there. The disaster at Fukushima occurred after a magnitude 9 earthquake. Of course, we know this. It happened in 2011, and the, fall, the, the disaster of what this is is very much still ongoing. It says, cesium is a volatile fission product created by nuclear fuel. During the Fukushima meltdown, it contained... It combined, excuse me, with a silica gas created when melting fuel and other reactor materials interacted with the concrete below the damaged reactor vessel. The resulting glass particles, known as cesium-rich microparticles, measure a few microns or tens of microns across. And of course, that's one of the problems. That's one of the ways that internal contamination can happen is that you breathe those in and they fester in your lungs and they fester in your body, wherever they happen to be. This is explained frighteningly well in the movie Silkwood. It says, uh, Satoshi Yutsumoya, U-T-S-U-N-O-M-I-Y-A, and Iratero Kurahara at the Kyushu University and colleagues in Japan, Europe, and the U.S. analyzed three such particles obtained from soil samples dug up at two sites within a few kilometers of the Fukushima plant. It says they used a range of techniques to study the physical and chemical compositions of the CSMPS and the aim of establishing whether they contained any plutonium. Well, lucky, lucky us. Mapping plutonium spread. Spread. To date, plutonium from the accident has been detected as far as 50 kilometers from the damaged reactors. That's just real matter of fact. Do you realize the toxicity of plutonium cannot be overstated? I mean, what this does to the body at even the smallest amounts is horrific. Plutonium is arguably one of the most, maybe the most deadly element known to man. I'm not going to ask Google again. She never shuts up. If you want to, go ahead. You'll find that I'm right. To date, plutonium from the accident has been, I just read that, researchers had previously thought that this plutonium, like the cesium, was released after evaporating from the fuel, but the new analysis instead points to some of it having escaped from the stricken plant in particulate form within fragments of fuel captured by the CSMPS. Of course, that's to some degree what a melt-out is. We know that we have one here, unfortunately. A melt through happened. There's a meltdown. We know what that is when the, the the core goes red. There's a meltdown, a melt through, and a melt out. 
these actual particles coming out, these particles being released are the are the problem, are the danger. There, there, there's no safe amount of this, oh, I just got a little bit of plutonium in me. If you have a, any plutonium in you, you are a screwbard. You are done. Utsamaya, God, I'm, I'm horrible at his poor name, and colleagues used electron mi micro microscopy and uh, syn synchrotron x-ray. That's a new one for me. Synchrotron x-ray, I'm not sure what that is, fluorescence to look inside the CSMPs. Based on this data, they were able to map the distribution of various elements. Oh, it's x-raying the particles. A distribution of various elements coming from materials within the damaged reactors, including iron from stainless steel, zirconium, that's what's wrapping the fuel rods, and tin from the fuel cladding, no, they just said that, and zinc from the cooling water. They also found uranium within one of the CSMPs in the form of discrete uranium oxide particles less than 10 nanometers across. Friends, I am going to do it again. I wish I had I wish I had the behind the scenes queen. She was a master at finding things like this and it was funny when she did it. Hey Google, how deadly is uranium? On the website cdc.gov, they say inhaling large concentrations of uranium can cause lung cancer from the exposure to alpha particles. Do you want a little more context? No. Hey, Google. Okay. Stop. Based on the data, they were able to map the distribution, and they found uranium. And again, what is large quantities? When it stays in your body, even the smallest particle is going to continue giving off beperols, which we've, just, we've said what they are a million times on this show. If you don't know, let me know in the comment lines. I'll describe it again. That's for life. It's going to continue to cause problems even if it doesn't necessarily manifest in the cancer. It says, however, the researchers were unable to find any traces of plutonium using these methods. It's probably due to the interference from strontium. Great. Another fission product. Instead, they turned to X-ray absorption. To compensate for the high levels of noise, they carried out the measurement at two different synchrotrons, transporting their roughly 20 PM diameter particle from Japan, blasted it with x-rays at the Diamond facility in the UK and Swiss light source in Switzerland. In other words, these are some of the most advanced x-rays known to man that are being used in this, which how many years into this are we now? We're going to, now we're getting some form of honesty as to how bad this is. What about all the people that were told, to, you know, this, that, the other? They weren't even told about plutonium. Maybe they don't have any interest in any of this crap, and they don't even know what they were exposed to. No warning, no anything. Or it was safe levels. There are no safe levels of uranium. That's why they pulled the toy. How many of you know that? They had a toy that... The children could melt pieces of uranium in a, in a reactor that was a toy. Look it up. It was horrible. The researchers focused their attention on the three areas of the particle generated the most fluorescence from uranium. They failed to detect plutonium at these two locations, but succeeded at the third, with absorption spectra produced at both psychrotrons indicating the element's presence. Bingo! The low signal-to-noise ratio meant that they couldn't identify exactly what plutonium species were present, but the shape of the spectra told them that it probably existed as an oxide rather than as a pure metal. It goes on to say that they used the max mass spectrometry to measure the relative abundance of different plutonium and uranium isotopes within the microparticles. They found that three ratios, uranium-235 and 238, as well as plutonium-239, compared to both plutonium-240 and 242, all agreed with the calculations of the proportions. Don't zone out. I'll explain why it's important. Just trust me that would have been present in the fuel at the time of the disaster. 
This agreement, coupled with the fact that the measured amount of uranium-238 was nearly two orders of magnitude greater than would be the case if it simply had evaporated from the melted fuel, led them to conclude that the uranium and plutonium existed as discrete fuel particles within the CSNPS. Uh, implications for decommissioning, they keep saying they're going to be able to take this down, take this apart. The researchers note that previous studies have shown that plutonium and cesium are distributed differently in the extended area around Fukushima, which suggests that not all CSMPs contain plutonium. However, they say that the fact that plutonium is found in some of these particles implies that it could, be as, it could have been transported as far afield as the cesium, up to 230 kilometers from the plant. Uh, this is how they let this roll off the tongue. Let me remind you, the death toll when they did the bomb testings, which they're comparing this to, just stay with me and you will be horrified and if you have any kind of thinking part of your brain whatsoever. Look up what happened to, I think, the entire casting crew, I would say I'm definitely the majority, it may have been all of them, who worked on the uh, John Wayne movie where he played Genghis Khan, uh, The Conqueror. That was filmed close to the proximity of the bomb tests. And every single person, I think, don't quote me for sure, it was a, it, the vast majority, I think, think it was all of them you know maybe if you were there for one day and you got a bit part maybe not so I don't want to say but all of them speaking you know generally died of cancer I mean you don't get even if it was 90% you don't get 90% of people on any one project dying of cancer without something being the cause listen to this because again this is physics world as regards to any threat to health, they note that radioactivity levels of the emitted plutonium are comparable to global counts from nuclear weapons testing. Listen to this. Such low concentrations, they say, may not have significant health effects, but they add that if the plutonium were ingested, the isotopes that make it up would yield quite high effective doses. In other words, that's a fancy schmancy way of saying there, if it's mixed with plutonium, it will be with you for life. That's what that means. With radiation levels still too high for humans to enter the damaged reactors, yeah, it will be for 245,000 years with uranium, 4 billion years before it'll be safe for them to go. But they don't want to say that. Again, they try to coat these things. But they, I just told you they found uranium there, so how will it ever be safe? Listen to this wording again. With radiation levels still too high, like it will be for the next 4 billion years, for humans to enter the damaged reactors, the researchers argue that the fuel fragments they have uncovered provide precious direct information on what is happening during the meltdown at the current state of fuel debris. In particular, the doctor points out that the composition of the debris, just like that of normal nuclear fuel, varies on the smallest scales. This information could be vital for decommissioning, and given the potential risk of inhaling dust particles containing uranium and plutonium. That is how bad it is. Okay, that's that, friends. And then there's more to come. I've, I've got more to go here. I'm going to have to hurry up, though. I'm going to run out of juice on that camera, uh, storage power. Uh, I need to get a better camera. Correct views at hot the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. That would be great. Um, the Japan Times Fukushima localities speak out against dumping radioactive water into the sea. I'm not going to talk about this for a long time because we've talked about it many times. But suffice to say, the people in Tokyo are still thankfully really fighting not to have their entire area utterly and hopelessly ruined. Hey, what's up, Mask Page? Nice to see you. Where's my mask? I'm in my own house. I only need a mask when I fart. 
and then have to block me as a mask. Uh, 17 out of the 59 municipal assemblies in Fukushima Prefecture have either passed a resolution or issued a statement opposing the discharge into the Pacific Ocean of treated radioactive water currently stored at the Fukushima 1 power plant. This is according to a Fukushima Minpo survey. Many municip municipal assemblies have urged the central government to instead come up with measures involving long-term storage of the contaminated water tanks. Now, that certainly is a better idea than dumping it into the ocean. Again, you can see the rest of the article in Japan Times, but I've covered this many times. But I want to get to the important part of it, so I didn't just want to gloss over it. The trouble is even, hopefully they will do something long term because it would be better than dumping it into the ocean now. But again, you're just sort of biding your time here because sooner or later there's going to be an earthquake or a tidal wave big enough to overcome what that island can sufficiently build to prevent it. Even if it just takes the entire, uh, part of the entire island down with it, which you know, again, that's how Japan was made. So, I mean, that is rare, though. So, it certainly would be good for the, what we would consider long-term to not dump it into the ocean. But they have a, a significant problem there. One of them is they can't get the tritium out of the water. They're running out of room rapidly. This is what happens when you use nuclear anything. All right, friends, I do want to move for a moment to China, and I don't want to talk about this for a long time, but I feel that I need to because most other hosts are not, and they are doing, friends, a vast injustice. The Three Gorges Dam is the biggest dam in the world. One more time, shall we? Hey, Google, how high is the Three Gorges Dam? How many feet? Hey, Google, how many feet high is the Three Gorges Dam? The Three Gorges Dam is 594 feet high. 594 feet high. Hey, Google, how long is the Three Gorges Dam? 1.4 miles. What? On the website nationalgeographic.com, they say, the dam is some 1.4 miles long and 607 feet tall, five times larger than the U.S.'s Hoover Dam. 500 feet, bigger than the tallest roller coaster in the world. Do you know what's in the path of this flooding dam? I heard this on the radio from a host. I don't know if it's an exact number, but I think it is. 60. Six, zero, 60 nuclear power stations. Do you have any idea what would happen if 60 nuclear power stations were hit by that much water? Do you have any idea? Okay, you can put those pumps up your case. They're not going to do anything. The dam was holding back 45% of the water, which rose more than 50 feet above flood level. Fox News, China flooding, 14 killed at Three Gorges Dam, published two days ago. It's as the Yangtze River uh, water peaks. It says three landslides have occurred. Three people have died. It. The dike gave way nine days ago. It'd be 11 days ago now. Flooding 15 villages and agricultural fields in Jainixi province. That's probably Yingxi. A news agency said more than 14,000 people were evacuated. Now, friends, we all know by now, right, that China withheld the sequence of the COVID-19 virus from the world. They hid general information about the outbreak. They did the same with SARS. They've done this, I think, with the swine flu or the bird flu, probably both. I forget which one. Um, they've been proven by every nation 
to be one of the most dishonest nations in all of world history. How do... We won't know until reactors start telling us. It's like Russia. Russia hid their nuclear problem until reactors have told us. They've done that in every instance they've had a problem, which is constant. It seems like every 15, 20 years, something goes red and they hide it. It's not just Chernobyl. It's also Maybach. It happened recently when Sweden a couple of years ago found it. Well, now, do you expect China to say, yeah, well, damn, broke. And uh, hit two of our powers. So, you know, they're not going to tell anybody you know, until it goes red enough to be picked up by uh, monitoring systems of the world. Who knows how many lives will be lost by then? I mean, certainly the average Chinese person doesn't know any better. They don't deserve to die like that. Even if China doesn't care. Three Gorges Dam Stable prevents out of control floods, according to the operator. This is the Global Times. This was on the 7th. They were saying that everything was going to be fine. That was my point of calling that up. On the 7th, they said everything was fine. Do you understand what I'm saying here? It's, it's a big deal, and I think it needs to be watched. And uh, we need to have more sources other than just China. Friends, this is a very long article that I am going to spare you from listening all of. You're going to want to read it, though. It's from Wired Magazine. Nine years ago, Fukushima's mental health fallout lingers. And as you read it, you are going to be furious, particularly if you have been a regular listener of the show and have paid any attention to the facts and sources that I have given to you over the many years. Because this here is trying to say that all of these problems are just in your head. They're just in the people's head. Oh, it's safe to eat faux oh, peaches. Why would I say that? Maybe you'll know if you keep listening. It's safe. It's safe to go to Fukushima. It's safe to surf there. We've covered that. It's safe to have the Olympics in Tokyo. Of course, it's just in your head. If you think plutonium and uranium is dangerous, even though it's radioactive for 4 billion years, and if you get it into your body, you can never get it out. Oh, we detected some uranium, some plutonium. It's no big deal. If it were not illegal, Ayumi Ida would love to, to, to test a dead body. Recently, she tested a wild boar's heart. She also tested the contents of her vacuum cleaner and the filter of her car's air conditioner. Her children are so used to her scanning the material contents of their life that she cuts the grass. Her son says, are you going to test that too? She's worried that he's going to be exposed to school lunchroom or somewhere. And they're trying to make it sound like it's just in her head. That there hasn't been any... I keep getting this bonehead on my page telling me there is no rise in deaths. And yet we see a very high number of children. It's not just that you're testing more children. They, 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 that's a lie they like to use. Well, we're testing more children, so of course more of them have thyroid issues. No. Because if you tested that many children anywhere else in the world... That many children would not have thyroid issues. It's not like COVID-19. It's equally spread all over the world. Fukushima is kind of distinct. And again, Dr. Busby has mentioned why there's also pockets elsewhere in the country dealing with, since they did much of the Fukushima debris burning and moving the soil all over the country, which he suspects was done so that lawsuits wouldn't be able to arise against Fukushima if cancers arose equally everywhere. Yes, they are that nefarious, a way they can hide lawsuits. Play it again. I meant what I said. To date, 186 cases of thyroid cancer among children have been found. Doctors at FNU contend that these are likely due to the screening effect in which widespread testing of a population, 300,000 children in the U.S. in this case, turns up diseases that would otherwise have remained undetected. Now, you're supposed to believe that it's normal for th out of 300,000 children for 186 of them to have thyroid cancer. That simply is not the case. I highly doubt you'd find that many people in 
let's say, you know, the middle of Africa? I bet you wouldn't. I bet you wouldn't find this among any area that doesn't have some kind of nuclear disaster in its history. Probably not where the bomb tests were done in the U.S. and not Pennsylvania, but I doubt you'd find that high in, say, Maine. I doubt they'd be that high in Arkansas. Friends, I got one story left for you here, and it is, of course, the dumb deal today. The last one was going to be the dumb D of the day, but I ended up not doing it because it was more mean-spirited what they're saying about these people than it was dumb. You have to at least be dumb along with your meanness. Um, I see, I don't think Facebook has been live. That's why I tell all my listeners it streams on youtube.com slash the media speaks. Go to the correct views on YouTube and it will be this video up top. It will be posted I try for the uh, Facebook one, friends, but sometimes it crashes. RNZ, dumb D of the day. Japan grows the world's sweetest peach in Fukushima. You see, I thought long and hard about making this the dunce cap of the month because it could very easily win the golden dumb D for the year, but then I have to find a way to send the dunce cap to Japan. And I've already sent things to General Electric, but it's not them that did it. So it'd be very hard for me to, but this is, this is the dumbest. Do you understand that aesthetically deformations and mutations can be beautiful? Like, let's say... We've covered this before, that a certain kind of fruit grows extra big in Fukushima. It's not a sign of good growing. Oh, it may be beautiful, its color may be astounding. And maybe a plant thinks that a two-headed child with a deformity is pretty as well. Point is, it's toxic. These changes, while I'm sure good growing has something to do with it, are not safe, and may or may not be a a warning sign, not a not a sign of uh, good farming. Would you pay seven thousand dollars for cancer? Would you buy a seven thousand dollar peach? They ask, a fruit so juicy, so sweet, so perfect that you just don't care about the sticky nectar dripping on your face. That's probably glowing. What if it came from Fukushima, infamous for one of the worst nuclear accidents in modern history? Before the disaster, peaches from the area were prized for their exceptional taste and luscious texture. And after the uh, tsunami and earthquake, of course, uh, that changed. As radiation spewed from the Fukushima, and continues to spew from the Fukushima Daiichi plant, tens of thousands of residents were forced to flee their homes, some never to return. Again, they give the lie here, while radiation levels have dissipated. Why doesn't it say, while certain radioactive levels have dissipated, and of course we found uranium and plutonium, an inescapable stigma remains. The stigma will be there for roughly 4 billion years, since that is the half-life of your, uh, uranium. Since then, the fifth-generation peach farmer... Koji Furuyama has been striving to decontaminate the region's reputation by growing the sweetest peaches. Yeah, who cares? I'll just sell these peaches to my fellow residents for the good of my pocketbook and not care what danger I'm giving them to. It's hard to return to what it was 10 years ago before the disaster. There are many victims who have started new lives. Yeah, that's because they don't want to be where the poison is. It's that kind of stupidity, friends. It really is that kind of stupidity. Friends, I want to thank you for listening to The Correct Views. That is your show. Do me a favor. Please donate, if you can, at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com through PayPal. One of the things I certainly would like to do is to get a better camera than the one that just crashed for, uh, <laughs> I got a call 
So do me a favor, friends. That would be wonderful if you hit share as well. Absolute huge help. Hello, Susie Q. Well, there is a need for a mask depending on where you are and the situation. Like I deliver to nursing homes. That's sometimes a good time to wear a mask. All right, friends. Good night. God bless. Thank you.